Did you know that the first speaking about artificial intelligence was Alan Turing in 1950 with his article Computer Machinery and Intelligence? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hello Trust, your one-stop podcast dedicated to the world of digital trust, a set of innovative technologies uh, that allows us to perform complex operations directly online, such as signing a digital contract, opening a bank account, or even subscribing an insurance policy. I'd like to remind you that this podcast has been produced by InfoCert, the largest qualified trust service provider in Europe, and you can watch all the episodes uh, through our YouTube channel or even and listening to it uh, uh, through your favorite podcast platform. Also in this last episode with me, Igor Marco Longo, our black belt <laughs> in EIDAS 2. Hi, Igor. Okay. Hi, Pasquale. Wow, we are, uh, we are at the end. Yeah, almost at the wow. end. And today with us, a very innovative expert, Fabrizio Leoni. Ciao, Thanks Fabrizio. for having me. Ciao, ciao, Pasquale. So, Fabrizio, uh, this time for this last episode, I want to start in a different way because we won't start from the regulation. We will start from the basis. What is artificial intelligence? Yeah, uh, interesting question. <laughs> uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, in reality, is an umbrella term, let's say. Uh, so there are a lot of technologies, uh, different uh, shades uh, of intelligence. Uh, also, the definition of human intelligence is not so clear, uh, scientifically speaking. And uh, uh, it is a discipline that have grown a lot in, in, the, in the last year, uh, because of the existence of a new class of uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, artificial intelligence uh, softwares, which are called large language models. Uh, and when we are speaking uh, in these days uh, about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, we are speaking about uh, systems that can act as a human in uh, dialogue uh, with the human, in uh, uh, expressing themselves as they were uh, human being. Uh, this will change. Will will change a lot. Two things: the th way we develop uh, software and mm -hmm. the way the human will interact uh, with uh, uh, machines. Oh, I already tried all the chat uh, uh, with AI uh, that are existing in this market right now. Actually, yeah. <laughs> obviously, me, me me too. Going a little bit deeper. Uh, really? In, 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 yeah. In, in in looking at what's not available uh, on the uh, market for end users. So you are so a beta tester. I'm a beta tester. <laughs> we have the preview. We have access to preview okay. uh, of uh, technologies. Uh, but the uh, important thing that is that uh, when you, as a user, uh, use a, a, an AI chat mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, uh, uh, you have a general purpose uh, uh, features. Uh, uh, when you are designing uh, a um, AI uh, software, mm -hmm. uh, which is meant to be used in the industry, to be used by enterprise customer, mm -hmm. you have to take care of a lot of other, th of other things. So you have the engine, and the engine is uh, uh, the, uh, the language model, yeah, right? the language model, okay. the, the, the thing which is able to uh, emulate human language, but you have a huge pipeline of things you have to do before, choose the engine, uh, there are, we, we know two, three names of engine, which are the one with the chat. Uh, there are 10 of uh, engine available now on the market uh, okay. uh, as different materials level, uh, moving faster in evolving uh, uh, every month we have something new. And so you have to take care about all of this. And also you have to take care on the filtering or the controlling of the output of this system. Okay. And this is what bring, can bring it trust to uh, an AI system. Speaking about trust, uh, in this podcast, we are dealing with trust in each episode. Uh, Igor, uh, what is the relationship uh, between trust and AI in this case? Okay, um, I cannot speak now about regulation uh, uh -huh. without speaking before about the strategy. The strategy is called Fit for the Digital Age. It is a legislative strategy of uh, our, the European uh, Commission that proposed uh, many texts that uh, um, aim to regulate different elements of the new world 
driven by digital, driven by technology, uh, dri driven by uh, even artificial intelligence. Some examples, the Digital Service Act to regulate the digital services that are mm -hmm. already existing and pervasive but should be regulated. The Digital Markets Act so to regulate the markets created by these digital uh, services. The AI Act, so the first um, organic regulation in the world about this topic of this podcast today. So this episode about um, artificial intelligence. AI, this is one of the pillars of this Fit for the Digital Age uh, strategy. So, you know, AI Act and EIDAS are on the same basket of regulations that uh, together aim to regulate the, the, the current and the future development of the market. Uh, we will come back on AI Act uh, and we will go in deep on this. But before, I have a question because I tried the chat I was telling you before. Uh, but can we trust the AI and especially at this moment, the generative AI? I, I don't know if the, uh, sorry, I don't know if the question has a, a sense at the moment. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you think that uh, AI uh, basically is a huge set of technology, mm -hmm. uh, the real question should be, uh, can we trust the way AI is used when uh, Uh, a person, a company, uh, implements an AI uh, project and give the interface to their customer. So the trust is not the trust of the technology. Is is, is a, a, a car trustable? Uh, a car is trustable if it's driven by someone you you, you trust. A, tra a car is not trustable if it's not driven. Uh, AI uh, adds some complexity in this statement. When you develop an AI application, uh, you have to deal with an engine which is not uh, perfectly predictable in its uh, uh, results. So the uh, activity of programming a common software is to tell the machine exactly step by step uh, by step uh, each uh, task you have to do. Uh, when you program a system using an AI engine, mm -hmm. you give more let's say, high-level instruction and let the machine work for you. Uh, an important thing in trust is uh, to make sure that the instruction you give and the filter you can put uh, to uh, control the output uh, and the feedback you can give the machine uh, to tune uh, the result of uh, the conversation are correctly trustable for the environment and the users you are talking to. So we can say there is not a generic trust uh, uh, talking about uh, AI system, but AI system must be tuned. Must be tuned uh, to have the correct level of trust uh, with respect to the use you want to uh, and the results you want to achieve uh, with that system. Uh, this can be complex uh, and is a mainly by tuning uh, uh, responsibility on the construction of this pipeline uh, that gives uh, trust to the end user. So uh, at the end, we still need humans uh, uh, to manage exactly. in some way uh, AI. But uh, one last question for you, Igor. Yeah. Uh, AI Act is the first time that European Union actually is arriving really, really fast in Indeed. a regulation uh, of uh, uh, a particular argument. Uh, what can you say about it? How many hours do I have? <laughs> no, like one minute. <laughs> okay, so I need to stay uh, quite, uh, quite synthetic. Um, well, the purpose of the EI Act is to, is to protect citizens. So the idea is that uh, AI is a really powerful technology that can become and will become, in my opinion, and not only in my opinion, pervasive. So we will find sure. the AI. We actually are already having artificial intelligence um, connected into a lot of our uh, daily actions and technologies we deal with. The idea is that with the evolution of AI, there is some risks for human rights. So we need because it's a, it is a powerful technology to regulate that. Europe is really the first uh, legislative body that is uh, regulating artificial intelligence. So we are ahead in, um, in the world. This can be good, 
but because we are designing and orienting the market and the developments to, to put the people at the center. Can even be bad, and there has been a lot of debate uh, during the AI Act negotiations because the risk is to uh, create problems to the development, so harm the developments of small medium enterprises, technology sure. uh, companies uh, in Europe. But we need to find the right balance. Just one thing to reconnect AI Act with EIDAS, for sure, strategically part of the same packages. But if we think that one of the main um, objectives of EIDAS and the UD wallet is to put people at the center. We can understand how these regulations are interconnected. Uh, more practically, um, artificial intelligence tools are already used by um, digital trust products to identify people, to support the identification of people, uh, you know, uh, biometric uh, um, processing, uh, automatic reading of documents, uh, or even to enhance the functionalities, the basic functionalities of any delivery service, a signature platform, and, and so on. So, you know, AI, AI will be uh, a tool to uh, enable EIDAS uh, products, uh, and the EIDAS uh, could, in my opinion, will be um, will give some tools to make more trustworthy uh, even uh, AI uh, platforms in the context where they are used. So, uh, a good relationship between these two regulations by, uh, you know, European Union. Last question for you, Fabrizio. The next podcast will be done by a deep fake. How can I protect myself from my deep fake? <laughs> AI is as as two faces at the moment, uh, can be used uh, by a fraudster, for example, or can be used uh, to uh, generate uh, fake content uh, uh, on a massive scale yeah. uh, to uh, influence uh, public opinions uh, on a, a social network. Uh, but at the same time, AI is a powerful instrument to uh, fight against uh, this uh, kind of attacks. Uh, At the moment, uh, almost uh, all the advanced uh, um, software in uh, uh, fraud control, in uh, uh, document tampering control, uh, in face matching are based on AI. They are already based on AI. Uh, uh, it's more, let's say, a traditional AI with respect to uh, the large language model, but they are present. They are present at the moment uh, and they are a shield against uh, uh, fraudster. And as fraud evolves, uh, in the, the same time, uh, mm. AI is evolving uh, in defending citizens and companies from attacks. So it's very interesting. We use AI uh, to just uh, better identify and certify the identification of a person, of an individual. And then we let this user, thanks to this identification, to have a qualified trust service yep. to be used for signing, uh, just online accessing important services like bank account, etc., etc. Yep. This is very interesting. We will see uh, what is going, uh, you know, to happen in the future with AI. So thank you very much, Fabrizio, and thank you very thank much, you. Igor. Uh, we did it. Actually, it's done. No, it's done. It's <laughs> a pity. It was so interesting. <laughs> uh, maybe we will have a third season. Hopefully. But thank you very much to you all for watching us. Uh, you can rewatch all the episodes on our YouTube channel or listening to them uh, through your favorite podcast platform. Thank you very much and have a good day.